Welcome to Django code review number four. Of course, we're doing code reviews on joincfe.com slash YouTube. That takes you to our YouTube channel, and here it is right here. Today's submission comes from Saad. Saad has a resume website that we're gonna take a look at in just a moment. Now, if you want to have your repo, your Django repo reviewed like we are about to do for Saad, please leave a comment on this video or the newest version of the Django code review. So the latest Django code review video. Um, the requirements are you have a Django repository. It's actually in Django, not any other languages at this time. And also you are a subscriber of our channel as well as having that bell on. So leave your comments below or in that newest video and we'll make sure that we take a look at it much like we're gonna do right now. Saad, thanks so much for your submission. Let's go ahead and just take a look. So I'm gonna open it up into a new tab. And for this one in particular, um, a couple things that I note right off the bat. First of all, let's make sure that you start describing your projects. Now, even if they are for you or a small team, it, it's good to get in the habit of describing these projects so anyone just looking at them casually has an idea of what's going on especially if you're doing this as a resume, right? So if you're building a resume website and you're gonna have it open source, you might want to consider having your description, your website and your topics that are related to this, like putting Django, Python and all the other things in there. Another thing is also adding in your readme, making sure that that's all improved. So those are just sort of general GitHub things, but um, as far as how your project is set up right off the bat, where is SRC? Um, so SRC as in the source folder. Of course, if you go to our GitHub, joincfe.com slash GitHub, and you go to pretty much any of our projects, you're gonna see the SRC folder. That is any of our Django projects, of course. So the SRC folder is where your Django project exists. This makes it a lot easier for any developer or myself to just come in and look at it. But then also down the line, when you have multiple projects or dozens of projects, it's gonna be easier for you to just jump right in too. It just takes a split second and it's just such a subtle change, but I'm bringing so much emphasis on it because it's one of those best practices that definitely recommend you do and other people do. So I, I'm, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm picking on you. I'm definitely not. I'm just trying to make sure that you know this because the one we're gonna do right after this has the same thing going on. So if we go into your project inside of resume, um, we have another thing that comes up, CV and resume. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure that resume is the name of your project or your Django project because you have it out here too, but CV is confusing, right? So CV is an app. If we go in there, it's definitely an app because models.py is. If we go into the other resume folder, we see that it's settings, so that's definitely how it is. But those two are confusing because they're roughly the same thing, right? So like accounts, and if I said user accounts, it's roughly the same thing. So you wanna make sure that you're not overlapping that too much. So, or at all, I mean, that's something just to consider. I mean, if, if it's impossible to do it, then that's okay. Like, for example, on, on some projects I have that accounts and profiles, they're, they're, they're very, very similar, but they might have that subtle distinction. But in this case, pretty sure CV and resume are the same thing. Anyway, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of your apps here. So I'm gonna jump into accounts and look at models. You haven't changed any models, so you don't have any custom user models, that's fine. We're gonna look at your views. Let's just take a, I'm just gonna take a quick look here as to what's going on. Um, this looks pretty solid. Now, I would challenge you yourself to change this into a class-based view. Can you do that? That is for all of these, can you change it into a class-based view? Um, so the logout view, I would also consider adding a message on here using Django contrib messages. So that's actually what we'll do is Django contrib messages, quick search for that, or you could even search Django messages. So we're gonna be using and implementing the messages framework on your project. So a couple things that we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and edit this project. So this creates a fork of the project onto my own repository. Now I'm not using the main Coding for Entrepreneurs repository. Instead I'm using Team CFE, which is just mainly here for this purpose. Okay, so I'm gonna actually scroll up to where I would import it. So we're gonna do from django.contrib import messages. Okay, 
So with messages, you basically alert or do this sort of site-wide notification that allows the user to know, hey, what happened is successful, right? So um, you don't necessarily need to do it on login. You probably want to do it on create. Maybe not because you actually have it log in, but you could do messages.success and we would take in the request and then whatever your message is. So you'd say um, account created. Okay, we're gonna do that same thing on the logout view. And I'm just gonna come in here and instead of saying success, we'll say error and just say you're, you must be logged in to do that. There we go. Okay, so I added messages to project or uh, messages framework. Let's go ahead and just write that as a note. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and put it in here, the messages framework, added messages to project. I'm gonna propose this file chain. So it's actually gonna be sent to you as, or as Saad himself, he'll actually be able to see this. Um, so I just added messages, but I also wanna make sure that this is in the site settings. Um, so it's actually inside of our resume. We'll go into resume, into settings, into the main configuration, and it's in there, that's good. Okay, so that's a good part. The next part would be to look at his templates itself. So I don't actually see his templates in here. It looks like he does have one here. Let's go there into accounts. So he's using templates inside of the accounts itself. But what I'm looking for is base.py and it doesn't look like he has one. So there's another area that you'd wanna improve is having your templates with something like base.html, not pi, excuse me. Um, so base.html as your main template, just like what we have here. Um, you're gonna to wanna to do that same sort of thing. So let's go back into accounts into register form. Yeah, so you're not extending it from base.html uh, at all. So that's something else that you're definitely gonna to wanna to do. And once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and just add in the ability to actually display these messages. So thanks again for your submission. Um, good luck with your project. See you guys in the next one.